Do I need to, where's my channel? Like, how can I see my dashboard? I want to see what they see. Can we go to creator dashboard? We just had to get through a few things. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we need to oh, okay. So, where does it say, like, when people enter the chat? Like, where does it say their names? Like, where does it say their names? Because, you know how, like, people can see it when they have a stream. Are you like this because I muted it on OBS, but I'm afraid that I don't. It's I muted my mic, or I put like on the ceiling. That's good, right? No, your mic is still playing. Sound. Hey guys, welcome. I am giving it a minute just because I want to see if people switch over from Instagram to the stream. Um, but yeah, let's see. Also, I want that to show. Oh, okay, that's not showing because no, why is that not showing? Uh, no, 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 no. Hey Jack, welcome. Sorry, I'm just taking a minute because I um, did not expect to stream on Switch, but I hope this works a lot better. Let me know if you can hear me and everything okay, because I'm still new to doing this whole thing. Why is... Okay, cool, 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 cool. Oh, uh, I'm so annoyed though. Like, I literally had this, like, other, um... Hmm. I'm being picky. Oh, wait. I know why. Okay, wait. Okay, whatever. It's fine. I'm being picky right now and I need to stop. Okay, so anyways, we're waiting for a couple people to join. And wait, I want this to be here. Okay. And...
Okay, so like I was saying on YouTube, I'm not going to repeat all of that, but like really quickly, um, I was, I'm going to be upcycling this skirt into some sort of top or dress or something. I just was like feeling very stagnant doing like the pants every day. I know I'm like just doing them like one hour every day. So it's like taking me forever to complete one pair of upcycled pants. And I really need to stop that because it's outrageous. But um, yeah, because it's just taking me so long to work on those, I decided I'm going to jump over and just make something completely different today um, because I really did want to go live. And so my thought was, let's drape something because I haven't done it in a while and I absolutely love it. And it's just a little bit more freeing than doing pattern making and all that stuff. So that is the idea, what I had in mind and what gave me the idea of using this skirt, even though it's not the best quality, like I was saying, it's okay, we're just gonna move past that, um, is that when I put it on the mannequin, since it is a circle skirt, which means it's just a complete circle with a hole in the middle, it lays so beautifully on the mannequin, like, ah, uh, I can make so many things with this because it's just gonna lay so easily. So that is what gave me the idea. That is why I chose this skirt. Um, but yeah, so let's see. Now, um, before cutting it, I just really want to see where these side seams are going to end up because they're kind of like heavy and obnoxious. So honestly, you would just love them to land on the shoulder. That would be great. But I don't think it will because you want the um the larger part of the skirt to hit the center seam so what if actually we kind of worked with this side seam and made it the middle okay that's an idea that i didn't originally have i kind of love that so where i, I am gonna do that i think so i'm going to put and maybe i'll sit like this just so you can actually see what i'm doing let me know if you can't see anything because that would suck. I can't move my mannequin up or down because when I moved to New York, I put it in the car and we took it all apart and then put it together again when we got in the car. And um, yeah, it doesn't move now. And I don't, I don't know how to fix that. So we're just living with it. Kind of like the toilet situation, which if you were on the live stream where I talked about that, it is still not fixed and we are still waiting for a new um, flapper. So that is also a sadness in my life. It's like, it's something you don't notice at all until you go to use the bathroom and then you literally have to lift the lid to flush the toilet. Oh my gosh. So frustrating. So frustrating. So we're just going to kind of stick a couple pins in to see um, if we can get this the shape we want it. And my goal is to just alter this center seam like the stitch that we're going to make because we are going to have to eliminate some fabric in order to make this fitted which is my goal um i'm just going to make the seam right inside the seam that already exists which is going to be so perfect all right Okay, I really like this so far. Now when you're doing this, you do have to remember that you're probably gonna need to, unless you're doing something asymmetrical, you're gonna need enough fabric to copy whatever you're doing on this side onto the other side. And also try to make sure that this seam does end up over the center line because you are gonna have to sew this side to this side and you just want it to be, you know, flawless when you do it. All right, let's see.
And I think I'm gonna use just like a white chalk pen to like draw my markings so that I can copy it over. Also, I'm wearing a white sweater and I just spilled coffee onto it because I have coffee sitting right next to my pins. Not recommended. Okay, what is happening here? Like something moved and it's like loose. I don't like that. All right, cool. Again, just try to make sure it's over the edge right here because that will be your best bet. Okay, cool. And you don't want it to be skin tight when you're draping because like you don't really want to have this type of um, tightness. You want it to be as smooth as possible. So just leave a little bit of ease in there so that it can be smooth, especially if you're not the exact same size as your uh, mannequin. And actually we're just gonna take a break because like a one second break, don't worry. But, um, oh, you've arrived, awesome. Okay, cool, because I was literally just about to call you because um, I feel like everyone wasn't able to transfer from the YouTube. Let me try one other person to see if they were able to transfer. It's showing only two viewers, but I don't know if that's accurate. Were you able to transfer? Oh, you're on? Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Okay, so now that I know that... Um, there's definitely three of you here, then I know that the viewers are just not accurate because um, that you're basically all here. Oh, that's hilarious. I'm like, am I supposed to be able to hear you out loud? <laughs> all right, cool. So now we're going to get a chalk pencil and we are going to mark um, all of the little places so that I can take this off and like adjust it uh, or like take this off and like replicate it onto the other side. Um, and then we'll see how much fabric we have left and we'll be able to do the back. If you're working with a lot more fabric in your draping, usually you would not take this off yet. Usually at this point, you would start working on the back half and you would drape the front and the back and then you would flip it over. But for me, I don't really care how the back turns out and I really do want to try to have the same, um, like I want it to be a symmetrical front. So I would rather just make sure I have enough front fabric before I start draping the back because we could always do the back in velvet or something. I'm totally for that. So let's see. Also, this sweater is so hot. I'm literally gonna pass out. All right, let's see. I have no idea where my little chalk things are. Luckily, I found them quite easily. Okay, cool. So this is my favorite like um, chalk pen type thing. There's a lot of different ways that you can mark them. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of different ways that you can mark fabric when you're draping. I like these little rolly chalk things. Of course, like the powder inside does run out over time, but it takes a really long time to go through it. And you literally can actually just open this up and pour more powder inside. Um, that's a really good way to do it. I have not done that, but in the future, maybe I will. <laughs> I, they last a long time. So honestly, I never, I haven't run out of many, many of these. Um, but yeah, it has like a little metal, like, um, it kind of looks like this, but like a tiny version of this, like a little metal, like, uh, spinny wheel thing on the end. And then chalk comes out as you draw on it. So hopefully you will be able to, even on the video, see what it looks like when I draw it out. Yeah. It's like really easy to come out. And also this is like loose chalk. So it literally comes off so easily. On this pleather, I'll probably be able to just shake the pleather and it will just come off. 
I mean, hopefully it doesn't come off before I trace it, but... I'm going to mark all the way down on um, the side seam. I don't know yet if I want the garment to go this far down or if I want to stop it like here or here or something, but I actually kind of like this. So I'm going to go all the way down so I keep that option. And I also don't know if I want to cut the armhole or if I want it to go a little further. I kind of think I like the idea of it dropping over a little bit. Um, but I'm going to mark the armhole again just in case I need to cut it there because we want to make sure in the end we have enough fabric. And just remember, when you mark things like this, do not cut on this line because this is like... Um, just the exact markings of like where the seam is going to be so you need to leave seam allowance so that you can attach two seams together and it's still going to be the right size because if we cut this on this line and then we sew a quarter inch in it's not going to even fit on the mannequin anymore so it's most likely not going to fit on a human unless they're a lot smaller than this mannequin and this is a pretty small mannequin so we're gonna definitely try to remember to use seam allowance. Again, I make ditzy mistakes all the time, so we're hoping for the best here, but let's see. Also, I didn't cons consider, I don't know how much of my table you can see, so I don't know how this is gonna work when I go to make this adjustment, but let's see. All right. So I don't even really want to do all the seam allowance stuff right now. I just want to try to mark, don't need it right now. I just want to try to mark the um, halfway point so we can cut this off and cut the other side. All right, so we're gonna slide the sewing machine out of the way. And let's see, where does this go? It goes from here to here perfectly. So I'm just going to loosely cut around it. I'm going to put some pattern weights on top so that it doesn't move. And again, thank you guys so much for switching over from youtube to twitch because i have no idea what was happening but this is going a lot better than it was going over there so thank you so much for being like patient and um making your way over here all right again this doesn't have to be perfect when you cut this out because you're just cutting it so that we can put both sides back up on the mannequin. All right, cool. And I, but I, I'm not gonna make it super close because, like I said about seam allowance, we need that. But I want to make it close enough that we're not wasting fabric because we might want to use this. The only thing is, I don't know how I want to do the sleeve, so I actually don't want to. No, I don't want to cut that much of the sleeve. All right, so I'm actually hmm, contemplating this. Okay, well, there's a zipper here. So I am going to cut off where the zipper is. Because I, like I said, I kind of like the idea of saving the zipper for a different project. So we're going to cut it along the zipper. Okay, these scissors are not working very on this fabric at all. Okay. Alright, so we cut that there. And on this side, I am just also going to cut... it in half directly in half so if you want to save 
the seam allowance, we can, or not the seam allowance, if we want to save the sleeve, we can. I'm going, I'm going to only put one side probably back on the mannequin because I need to still do the back and usually only do it with half. So let's see. But maybe just to show you guys so you can see it all together. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what we said. All right. So this is the original one. Let's see if we can put it back up there and have it look the way it did before. All right, that worked out perfectly that we were able to cut it in half. So now I'm just putting it back where it lines up. I'm following where the shoulder seam is. You can't really see. The, like where I'm looking at, just so you can see, I'm looking at right here, this corner, I have this arch drawn, so I'm putting a pin right there where it's supposed to be, and I'm also lining up the shoulder seam with what I drew out. And then when we come to the center front line, I'm putting it in the center front, going right over the line like I did last time. And then I'm going to put it underneath the armhole where I have it marked. And I'm going to pinch this because we had it, um, we had a dart formed right here where the seam was. I feel like this might be a little too far over. that's in place put this one with a pin in the center front all right and we're just gonna pin down the side one more time and then make sure it all looks right I probably should have cut well no I think it's better not to cut the dart until now after I um, cut the other bit because I wanted to make sure it didn't move. You just want to be careful when you're pinning this um, fabric because you don't want to puncture like the leather and create holes. It feels like I'm pulling it too much. Okay. All right, so we are back to how it was before. And now we need to figure out how do we want to do the sleeve and how do we want to do the back. So the more I'm looking at this, I don't think that I want to do a like long floppy leather sleeve simply because I feel like the quality of this leather is just not great. Like right here, I'd rather use less of the leather. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, where are they? They're on my iron. My scissors, and I'm actually going to start cutting away some of this material. So first place I'm going to cut away is somewhere that I know for sure that we're not going to, I'm not going to change my mind on. And that is um, this center seam right here where we have the dart. I absolutely want to use that center seam to create my dart and I really like it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some of the fabric away just simply because 
it's in our way right now. It's making it hard to tell what's going on and it's pulling on the pins. So why not just get it out of our face? I'm not going to cut too much out of the way, but I just want to do enough so that we can get it out of the way. Get it out of our, like, the stop pulling. It's pulling so much right now. And I'm also going to cut this side part away. Now that I know I don't want to use the seam, I am just going to use, like, I'm leaving, like, an extra inch so we can still make adjustments and stuff. Um, but we don't need all this side fabric. And it's good to only drape one half because now we have our other half of the skirt sitting over there. We know we have enough fabric to make the front. So once we get this half of the shirt perfect, we can go ahead and take a perfect pattern piece and lay it on the other piece of fabric and we can go ahead and trace it. Also, I would like to mention that most people are not just going to drape with like the fabric itself because you can make mistakes and then you either have to make adjustments, live with it, or just scrap the material all together. So most people drape with like muslin, which is like a really cheap cotton fabric or um, a similar fabric to what they're using. So if you're using a knit fabric, you're not gonna use muslin to make the sample because muslin isn't stretchy, but you'll use like a very cheap knit um, so that you can make all the errors in the pre-fabric and then you can put it in the good fabric. The only problem is when you're upcycling, you really don't know how much fabric you're gonna have and if you don't make your if you don't like aren't really careful about how much fabric you're using in the pre-sample you might come to the point where you run out of fabric when you go to make your garment with the upcycled fabric which is what happened to me when I was making the upcycled pants the upcycled high-waisted jeans on the um, YouTube live streams like we're basically like 10 videos in on those pants. But the reason it's taking a little bit longer to do the pants, besides the fact that I'm just so slow and talk way too much and don't sew them at all on my, free, on my time not live streaming. But besides all those obvious issues, it's also because I did run out of fabric and I did have to make adjustments and you've seen that on the stream. I had to even, I ended up using uh, four pairs of jeans to make one pair of high-waisted um, flare denim which the denim is like a lot wider and all my jeans were mid-rise skinny jeans so of course I would have to use some more jeans than I had or like then I of you of course you would have to use at least two or three pairs of jeans but the fact that I do use four is quite surprising and so I ran out of jeans because I thought it would only take three pairs I thought three would be more than enough. So, okay, we're going to, we're at the shoulder seam right now. We've cut all this away. It seems so free, it seems so nice. Um, this is a big moment though, because do we want to cut, we don't know where we want this shoulder seam to be yet, because we don't know what we're making. So we're not gonna cut that. We're actually just gonna cut straight off at this point because now we have the option. We can have our sleeve be, you know, off the shoulder a little bit or, you know, whatever. So we're just gonna leave it like that. And this is what we have so far. I'm absolutely in love with it. And now we're gonna start working on the back. So what we're working with pretty much is this. Like we know that we're probably gonna keep this little shoulder right here. So what can we add to that? What material do we want to work with? If we want to work with the leather, this is how much leather we have left. Like there is nothing left of the skirt other than this. And this is for this side. And then we'll have one more of these um, bits that we can use for the other side. So most likely we're going to need another type of fabric to mix in here. But would we want to use this leather at all? I don't really want to use the waistband because like I keep saying, I feel like it's already pulling apart, but this fabric right here seems okay. I kind of like that. I like the idea of just doing a little bit of leather 
and then maybe a band of like velvet or something right there which actually might be a little more comfortable because the velvet is going to stretch a little bit so let's check it out what can we do with this um we are going to take this before we put it on there and we're going to just make a curve I think my big curve is over here all right probably gonna need the hip curve but let's see the curve I want is already there I already thought it looked great but I just want to smooth out the line a little bit because I did a really rough cut So all I'm doing is I'm using my curve, I'm placing it on top of it on the table, and I'm going to draw a little, a straighter line, and then I'm just going to trim that off before we start doing anything else. decide like what curve to use right now I don't know if I want to take that much off the edge all right we're gonna leave the top part unedited because I don't want to mess it up all right so now I'm gonna use my little shears I'm using the little shears because you've seen like the metal ones were not working well on this fabric at all and I feel like my little shears are a lot sharper. That's just, I just need to get my metal shears sharpened professionally. So let's give this a try. Now remember, when you lay your back on, leave a seam allowance. I would recommend leaving the same amount of fabric sticking up on the back that you already have sticking up in the front because I left about an inch. So that's really perfect. I mean, a seam allowance is usually only um, a half inch or a quarter of an inch, but when you're draping, you can make adjustments at any time, like things change and you just want to make sure you have enough fabric to work with. So... Now I think even though um, I think I might do my um, uh, what is it called? I think I might do the lower half. So this is what I have so far. Oh my god, I love it. So um, I think I'm going to do this part where it's going to meet the other side I'm going to have them overlap so it actually goes over to the other side a little bit like this much probably just to here because I think I'm actually only going to have this um part this leather bit go to right below like just a quarter of an inch below or actually not even below just right at the natural waist so what we're gonna do is we are gonna actually cut this away. But first, so I don't mess up, I'm going to draw the line of where I want the seam to be. So I don't accidentally cut too far. So I'm dragging my finger across the natural, uh, the natural waist ribbon. 
so that I can see where that seam is supposed to be. And I'm just pulling the fabric to make sure it's where I want it. All right. And now we're just gonna trim away at that place. So let's see. Again, I'm leaving about an inch just while I'm draping. Cool. And we don't really know how we want the overlap to be right now, so I'm just gonna leave a little bit extra over there. So this is what we're working with so far, and this is probably all the pleather that we're gonna use on the garment. I mean, it's gonna be duplicated onto the other side, but I really want to keep this front look. So I feel like we should have whatever material we use right here as just a little tiny panel. I want to copy down and have over here. And I think I want it to be a stretchy material um, like the velvet so that it can go all the way across. So we're actually not going to cut the bottom half in half. Oh, I thought someone messaged something. I'm not going to cut the bottom part in half because I think I want it to be like go fully across if it can, if it's stretchy enough. This is stretchy too, maybe. All right. So now decisions. Do we want to use this velvet skirt, which is like a black crushed velvet, or do we want to use this very similar? This is more crushed than this one. This is like a very mild crush and this is like extremely visibly crushed um we might actually need both but which one do i prefer okay well you have to think about it like this this already ha is cut in panels so this is gonna have seams going all the way across it if i use this one um whereas this one has a ruffle and it has oh it has a ruffle and then it just has a front and a back. So it doesn't have panels. Hmm. But I don't want the back to be so flat. I want the back to be interesting, honestly. So I honestly might have to use both. Or I could do a silk, black silk. But if I use the black velvet, like it won't need a lining because it's really thick. Whereas this will be kind of see-through. I don't like that. All right. Um, let's. Hmm. <laughs> Decisions. Oh, thank you. All right. Let's see. Decisions, decisions, decisions. I feel like this is the one I want. Because I want to hang, I want to cut it in half, and I want to try to drape it in this direction. I feel like I want to see what it would look, or I want to see it look like draped from the corner, and see what happens. Honestly, I might save this, and I might use this as this bit over here, and just use this for the skirt. I mean, they're similar enough. But also, we're going to need barely any material for that. And technically, we could use this if we had to, but I really don't want to. So let's try not to do that. All right. So if we're going to do this, also, I like the idea of using this because, um, thank you. So I want to use this because, one, I really think I'm going to use this zipper for the high-waisted. I don't know if it's going to be long enough. I think so. The high-waisted denim comes up to here, and it's going to have, like, a front facing zipper but I kind of wanted it to go all the way down so we're gonna try it but maybe not we might use a longer one but I really like the idea of being able to upcycle this zipper I mean that's really useful but um okay so I took out this it had like underwire under the boobs saving that in case we ever need that and let's see I literally just did the tiniest little slit to take out the underwire because we don't know how we're going to do this fabric yet so we want to save as much fabric as humanly possible okay why did one side just like slide right out and then the other side is not also i would like to know um 
just in case um, any of you don't know me personally or go on my website at all. The website that is linked on this, um, what are we on? On Twitch is old very old and i don't think i even own that url anymore so don't go to blah 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 fashion.com to find me i am not there um my website is actually north of chelsea um but the place that you can find me now most often is youtube you youtube can i talk youtube um i'm posting every day for 60 days on youtube and actually talking about that the reason that i am posting for 60 days is because maura mitchell who is shrug girl queen shrug girl queen i have no idea i'm not a gamer or whatever the heck that is from um no offense i just don't know what that means so anyways uh shrug girl queen is maura mitchell on youtube um and she is posting for 60 days in a row so i am following her i started one day after her and we are actually nearing our 30 day mark of posting every single day um for well we're going on 60 but we're about at 30 right now which i think is pretty awesome and i'm pretty shocked because i've tried posting on youtube many times now and i get about one episode deep and then i just give up which you know is a huge difference to get to 30. Oh, your name was given to you? That's so crazy. Okay. Um, so let's see. I'm trying to take the zipper out, but I really can't see the stitches. Oh, okay. I can see the, zip, the stitches on this side. So the, that's the only problem with trying to upcycle all the parts of the garment is now we have to take a minute to get the zipper off without ruining it. And we're working with fabric that is all black and very hard to see, so that's fun. Okay, it's like hard. I don't know if I have bad eyes. It's like hard to see from every side. In five seconds, I just quit life and I cut it. I foresee this. Cause I just don't feel like I'm actually grabbing the seam at all. Okay, what the heck? At this point, it's a challenge, and I'm like, not willing to break, but I'm also not here for this challenge, and I really want to punch this shirt in the face. Come <laughs> on. Why can I not see? It's coming apart. It's just like taking a good minute because I'm trying not to like rip the zipper apart by like ripping out random bits of thread. Also, can I say like I feel like I've spent the entire day today just running downstairs to like where my mail area is and just checking for packages it has become an obsession and one i should probably stop ordering so much random shit from amazon <laughs> because it's such an addiction at this point like i don't even care what i'm ordering like i'm honestly just like excited to get the packages for no reason 
and then on top of like getting a ton of packages of stuff like I ordered for myself like I ordered like goldfish and I was like yay the goldfish came like I don't even want to eat them but I'm glad I have them uh, but also um I've been getting packages from other people and I've um I've been like obsessively checking like Oh, they said it was going to be here. Let me check again. Let me check again. I went downstairs like four times to check for the packages. And like the last time was like I looked slightly, um, I looked slightly suspect because like I walked down the stairs and I could already see like, no, the mail didn't come. Like there's still just one package sitting there that I seen this morning. So I know like there, my packages aren't going to be there. And there was like someone standing there and he's like, who walks like, I literally like look down the stairs and then like this guy see me like just go and then be like no and then walk up the stairs and he looked so confused like why would someone just look downstairs but then again like why are you confused like I'm looking at the entrance of the building like people are allowed to look in the lobby what if I was waiting for someone what if I'm looking for a package and it wasn't there so anyways I'm just saying that because I'm literally sitting here thinking like I wonder if my package came yet like I desperately want it I don't even it's nothing like I already know what the what it is it's not like it's a gift like that I don't know what it is although I did was also waiting for an edible arrangement all day today <sighs> because um my boyfriend tries to surprise me but then also tells me like what's coming so it's like not fully a surprise <laughs> and then it just becomes addiction because i'm like where is it like and then i become rude because i'm like can you like call them because it didn't come yet <laughs> and it came like at 9 p.m like it came near 9 15 like right before this stream which is very late i would think for a package like that it was very good though i shoved uh four chocolate strawberries down my throat within two minutes right before this stream so much appreciated although I have to say edible arrangements needs to get their stuff together because they clearly one of the what my theory is that they weren't gonna bring my package today because they didn't have it like made or whatever but then someone like didn't get their arrangement or didn't like um you know answer the door show up to pick it up whatever the situation was and they had like a leftover arrangement left and so they were able to like grab parts of it and put it in mine because my arrangement wasn't like one of those like floral bouquets that you see it was like a tray of like chocolate covered fruit and all of the apples had like prong marks in the bottom which is suspect like there shouldn't be prong marks in the bottom because there was no like uh sticks involved in the making of this item so Edible arrangements, get your shit together. Yes. And I'm not the type of person I don't like to anyone to feel bad. So, like, I didn't, you know, I hate to tell my boyfriend that it wasn't perfect. But I felt like I had to because I feel like he should say something. One, like, it was so late that they brought it. And two, like, that's just not not nice it makes you feel like you have old food. And, like, maybe you're going to get corona because, like, who knows who touched that. Oh my god, that is so funny too because I was just looking at, um, so I do, um, a, another, um, YouTube slash Instagram channel called Walking Produce and we do a podcast and I was looking at our Instagram and someone was, um, did a podcast like we follow a lot of podcasters on our Instagram for Walking Produce just because, you know, we do a podcast and um, they, there was someone who did a podcast about like how um, using the word Karen is extremely racist and millennials need to stop using it because it's like racist against like middle-aged white women or something. Did I add the middle age part? I don't know. He might have just said, it might have just said white women. Um, but I'm assuming it means middle-aged white women, but because I feel like young people say it, but I also think a lot of young white people say it as Jack just did um but yeah they said don't ever use the term Karen 
<laughs> because it's so rude. Although, like, I feel like Jack really doesn't care. But I thought that was funny because, I mean, I'm a white woman. I don't, I think it's really funny. Am I, I'm just probably, like, a really rude person. I don't know. No, we definitely took photos, yeah. And um, then uh, my boyfriend will take care of that because I didn't actually order it. But it was still sweet of him to send. So I'm still working on getting this zipper off, guys, but it is coming. It is, it's almost there now, so. And we saved it. It's, like, perfectly good quality now. Yeah, I know you're always the one to get free stuff, Jack. Like, you're on it. You're, like, one of those people that literally, if any small thing happens, you're, like, on Twitter, like, hello, sir, this is not working out for me. Please give me such and such. I feel like if they forget your fork in takeout in a takeout order, you're literally gonna at the company and tell them so that they give you like a year supply of sporks or something. That's not really me. Okay, I'm so happy because I'm like, um, I was able to like go like all the way around the zipper. So now I don't have to find an opening on the other side. I already have it. Amazing. All right, so we're almost there with this thing. Really just want to pull it. Okay, yeah, guys, this is what you have to do. Sometimes you just got to go for it and get this thing off. Okay, it's not gonna go anymore, I'm not that strong. But also be careful, cause like if you just rip your shirt then, sad, <laughs> you're screwed. I feel like that's one of the things I learned in fashion school that I didn't know at all until I went to fashion school. Like the first time they do, they um, take muslin because that's like what we work with the most. And you have to like when you, the best way, like the most professional, okay, throwing things on the floor. Most professional way to like make a muslin sample is to start with a perfect square of fabric or rectangle of fabric that has completely straight edges. So usually you take your muslin and you just rip it and it per creates like a perfectly straight seam and you like rip it on like all four sides and then you iron it and it's like perfect but like i had never seen someone like rip a piece of fabric before like i would have never known that that creates like a straight grain line and it's like <gasps> when you first see it but then you're like oh my god that's absolutely genius it's something that only works obviously with woven fabrics and you really only see it um usually with like muslin because that's when you're you do that to drape you don't like need to do that like before you cut out your your pattern pieces Okay, so now we're just taking off the end of the zipper, getting it disconnected. We're almost there. Thank you for bearing with me through this. All right, we're on the other side. Zipper's almost free. 
Okay, now I feel like I have to use this zipper on my pants because I put in this much, so much work. Also, like, why is it so hot in my room right now? Like, I don't want to open my window because it's honestly, like, super loud outside. Um, even on, like, it's not loud as in, like, people or cars or anything. But, like, just there's just a hum, like, when you open my window. Probably just, like, all the air conditionings or something. But I don't want that to be, like, the background vibe. Even though I feel like there's probably, like, a background sound to this video. Like, a humming sound. Because my computer is literally going to explode. It's something with running OBS. Because the last time I did a um, Twitch stream, it also ran really hard. And it doesn't run really hard any other time. Um, but, yeah, it's running really insanely hard right now. That it might blow up at any point. Just casually though. Alright, let's see. This is less casual. This is like a lot. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Alright, so zipper, it is saved, and I'm gonna put it with my stack of fabric for potentially for those high-waisted denim jeans that I will hopefully finish this week. So go ahead, put it over there. All right, now, how are we gonna do this garment here? Let's see if we can just rip this side seam like all the way up down the center. going to take so much to rip it. No, no we're not going to take out any more seams. We are literally going to cut down the front. I just started here because that's where the zipper was. So it's already split down the back and it will save us the most fabric if we just use that as our center point. Hopefully this was not a mistake. I didn't think it through at all. But actually it should be fine. Like it doesn't matter what I use because I want to drape it like this like I want to use I want to make both the whole back part in one go and then I'll use whatever's left to make the front but I want the skirt to be like flowy like I don't want it to be tight which is why I'm kind of like how do I want to drape it and I like to drape on a diagonal because you get the best vibe and I like this because then the stitches are going to be, um, actually this is going to be really, really, really nice if I do it this way because the front is already going this way and these, you can't, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a, the stitch, they were originally going up and down. Now they're going on a diagonal. So if we can kind of match the stitch on um, one of them, like one of the, um, seams so that it matches up with the line of the um front so it like goes like this and it keeps going that is going to look so high end and that is what we want to do so let's try to do that let's try to match it All right, you want to leave it so it's not super tight at all. So we might need to come back a little bit because I don't want it to get tight on this end. But we we still have room over here. We're not running out of fabric. So I wanted to start, I guess, over here so that we have enough fabric. And let me try to line it up on this side when we come back a little bit. So. Okay, you can't really see. Let me try to show you. So right here though, I want to make sure this connects right here. So got to make sure I have enough fabric there. And then that is what I'm trying to get to match like this right here. But how are we going to do that? If this seam, I really like the idea of it matching. Like that's so, so high end. Okay. I guess, mm, I mean, that's not really bad at 
all. But it doesn't really have like a vibe. Like it's not like, um, I like the fl more flowy look, but that might not be what we're gonna get. So let's see. Alright, I need more pins. Again, I'm trying to make sure I have seam allowance on the side. Obviously, we have enough seam allowance on the top, and we do have enough seam allowance on this side. So I actually just went and made it a little bit tighter all the way through. Sorry, I'm talking about the pin in my mouth. I wanted, made it kind of tight all the way through um, because the flowiness, we didn't really have the perfect amount of fabric and I like better the idea of this seam carrying on than I like the idea of having it be flowy. So you gotta pick and choose your battles when you're upcycling, like what is the best idea for this project? And I really like the idea of following that seam. That's super nice. Now we're gonna have to decide like how long we want it, but we don't have to do that just yet. I really like the idea of though pushing it back a little bit. Okay. So I can do that. So I actually have like a little bit of flow. If I push the seam in a little bit. The way that we can get some flare into the middle is probably if we just cut some flares from the middle section. So the way you do that is you're going to cut slits. Don't cut them too deep, but you want to cut them to the waistband of... So I'm going to put some pins in the waistband so that I don't cut too far in. And then we're going to see if we can get some flares going in the middle. So put it straight. And we kind of want to push the flares to where we want them to go. Like we want to flare here. And then we want flares over here. So we're going to put, let's start over here. Alrighty. Let's go in a little bit, cut this off. Is that gonna be enough? We might be able to make our little bit right there out of that. Cut this all the way across. That's not big enough. All right, so now we cut in our little flare clips. You want to go straight in, straight in, and see how we can lift the fabric in these certain areas to move it, to move the flare around. So we have a little, right now we have all the flare over there. So put the pin in, lift the fabric up, and Put the pin right here. And again, so now we've moved it and now we have a little bit of flare happening here, but we have a bigger flare happening over here. And I'm doing that by lifting the waistband band and putting a pin in it. And then we add in a longer clip. And then now when we take the pin out, there will still be flare. Before, we didn't have any flares right there. And now we just want to move a little bit of a flare over here as well, like to kind of make two smaller flares instead of one big one. So we're going to move the fabric up a little bit right there, and we're going to add a slit.
and we're gonna draw the fabric. And there we go. And we have to adjust the side a little bit. Cool. So now actually I got everything I wanted because I wanted to have some little, a little bit of movement in the skirt and I have a lot more movement now. So that is awesome. Now I still don't know how exactly I want this skirt to end up. Like I kind of like this length. So if you compare it to me, my shoulder is where this shoulder is. So it's a short skirt if it's to here. It's about, it's probably going to be about right here. So that's pretty short, but that's fine. It's like a little party dress. But we have to start kind of like cutting away this fabric so we can make something, like we can make a front to it. Otherwise there's no front. It's just like... I don't know, it has a train in the back. I'm not really for that. So let's go ahead and we're gonna cut. I'm just, honestly, I'm just gonna cut along the bait, like this. Um, I'm gonna cut along the mannequin, like right below. I can't lift my mannequin, so I literally have to get on the floor. All right, so we're gonna cut first the side seam. Ugh, I don't know. I don't wanna waste fabric. Okay, so I'm gonna actually do it from this way so I don't waste fabric. I don't wanna lose this like downward motion though, so I'm gonna. Of course we'll smooth this out later. If it's not perfect, it's that's okay. I'm trying to keep it all somewhat in the same length, but it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. And so then when I get to the side seam, I just want to keep it about an inch away from the side of the garment and go all the way up so that we can, oh, make sure you don't cut your pleather. I almost did. I saved it, but make sure you don't cut into the pleather, which is underneath. Okay, cool. I don't know why I have like a weird pinning job right here. Okay, cool. All right, so now this is how much we have left. Hardly anything. Of course, we do have the other crushed velvet right here, so we can always do that if we have to. We probably will, honestly, because we still have the whole front of the garment to do. Oh, well, actually, I have to really think about it because we're going to have that right there. So I should really only think about this half. Still, 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 still.
All right, let's just cut this in half because we gotta see what we're gonna use. Heck no. <laughs> Considering putting like the ruffle across the front. Oh, you can't really see. But no, that's not really my vibe. Um, honestly, I'm going to cut the ruffle out. Thank you. I'm going to cut the ruffle off and potentially add it back on at the end, like on the hem or something, or on the sleeve tops, I don't know. Let's see what we're gonna do. So I'm definitely leaving, I'm thinking like a little peak hole in the, um, I am making, literally I'm just, uh, what is it, kind of like draping like spur of the moment, just figuring out as I go. I think I'm going to end up with a dress just because I made the back, you know, like full, like a short little mini dress. Um, but we just started with this leather and then we were, um, they look like really strange jeans. How are they jeans? This is a top. We're making a top and then probably turning it into, um, did I call it jeans? No. Did I call it that? Oh shoot, I called it that. I just like kept the name from, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um, Sorry, I honestly just quickly jumped on Twitch because my live stream on YouTube wasn't working. Um, but my YouTube live stream was called Upcycling um, a mini skirt, a leather mini skirt. So yeah, that's, I'm sorry, I'm a ditz, so, I mean, do you want me to literally try to change it right now? Because I literally don't know how to use Twitch, and I just used the word literally so many times. Oh, actually, I will edit it right now. I will be that person. But I don't know what this was originally called. Uh, 
All right. There we go. Stop complaining. All right, I changed the title, guys. We don't know what it's gonna be, but we took a leather skirt and we actually took a velvet skirt and now we are making whatever the heck this is. I think it's gonna be a mini dress. Little, short little thing, but. I'm not 100% yet. Again, I kind of want the skirt like to flare a little bit, so I keep adjusting it, trying to add in some flares. But we can go ahead at the end, add a bit more. I'm trying to stay on one side of this because then we'll have enough to do the other side if I only use one side of it. It will have a center front seam, which I don't love, but... So if we just, like I did before, if we just add in some of these little um, tucks, then it will create little flares going down. Let's distinguish where our center front is. I really would like to pull the elastic out of this because I feel I don't want elastic. So let's see if I can cleanly just pull it all the way out or if I have to literally take out the seam. Of course it can't be that easy. No, it's literally sewn all the way through, sewn right onto the garment. This is what happens when you get part way through and you're doing something just like on a whim. You're like, shoot, where was I going from here? I'm thinking, okay, maybe I want like a bit more of the leather to like go toward into the skirt a little bit.
Now you have to imagine, it's gonna cover over here too. So only like this much will show, but. Just trying to get the vibe at this point. Um, I like folded this under so I could see a cleaner look. And actually, let's. Let's grab um, the other piece for a minute because I'm just feeling like a little um, unsure of how I want to move forward. So let's grab the other bit of um, the other top piece and throw it on here. I'm not going to cut it right now, but we can get the center front line and it will help us, you know, get the vibe that we're looking for. We don't really know what vibe we're looking for, but it'll be better to figure it out if we can, if we see the whole thing coming together know if I'm on the right track or not. Alright, so I kind of am liking this better now with the leather waistband snuck in there, so let's give it a try. Also, we have this ruffle still, so I don't know. I don't know. All right, so this is going to be the front. We know, ooh, okay, okay. I did not see this. So I said so many times that the skirt had like the leather starting to pull away. It literally has a part of the leather that is like ripped. So we are gonna hope, hope with all our heart that that is not part of the leather that's gonna show. And of course it does, it shows right in the neckline, but we're gonna work with it, we're gonna make it work. So, let's see. So we want it to... It doesn't have to be perfect because you're literally just placing it here. Um, as a placeholder, but you want it to be as close as humanly possible, especially because we have other pieces that we're kind of working into the mix.
perfect. Maybe. I don't know why it seems... Okay, cool. That took a lot more than I was expecting, but we got it. So now we have both sides. And thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, now we can kind of see what it looks like. This is the back. I'm in love with the back. The back is going to have this. Oh, I can't show. This part is going to repeat over here. And then we're going to add um, over here. We're going to add a little bit of strap in the velvet material and now we're just trying to figure out what the heck are we going to do with the front but also I feel like my front is not even my front is not even because this seam this black thing is supposed to come all the way over so why is it looking like that why is it not in the same way like falling and maybe I have it pulled too much in one direction because it is supposed to go all the way over to the side seam and the hope was that it's going to do the same thing as the other side so but we want the seam to match up because that's just weird if it doesn't I feel like it's because it's like the other side of the skirt, like it's not reflecting perfectly. Um, okay, so may end up being more asymmetrical than I hoped. I really do want it to come to the, the side over here, but then it's not, you know, flowing in the same way as the other one. Huh. Okay, this is going to be more frustrating than I thought. I, the, I really want to keep this line across here the same and I really want to keep this smooth and fitted so worst case scenario is that the curve ends a little bit early on one side and it's like a bit asymmetrical I think this is really nice even if it's asymmetrical so um, that's okay we're gonna work with this and it's gonna work out but to be honest this has been an hour and 30 minute live stream. We already did 10 minutes on YouTube, maybe 20 before I jumped onto Twitch. Um, so I am going to call it a night on this one. I appreciate you guys for joining me. I still have to figure out the front seam right here. This fabric is obviously not going all the way across yet. And, um, but honestly, like you might be able to just pull it over here. Just no. Um, and I have to work this out. Um, 
but I want to, you know, continue this probably tomorrow on another live stream. And um, yeah, so thank you so much for joining me. I'm sorry I didn't get all the way through yet. Um, but it is kind of a complicated little thing. So I will be back tomorrow. And um, thank you. Um, and I will work out what's happening with this side and why it's being a little funky. Maybe we'll just literally take this one off, trace it onto here, cut it out, call it a day. And then um, when I come back, we'll have the two matching pieces up here and we'll just have to work on the skirt. Um, but thank you again for joining me um, and thank you for coming over to Twitch. I know we originally started on YouTube and there was all that fuss. But I appreciate it. And if you want um, to know when I'm going live... I go live on YouTube more frequently than I do on Twitch, but I'm going to try to be more frequent on here as well. So subscribe or like follow me, whatever the correct word is to do on here, follow me. And that way you actually see when I'm going live and also go over to my YouTube or next time you're on it, make sure that you subscribe and you have the bell notification. Otherwise, you're not going to know when I go live and it's really random. I'm sorry, I don't have a schedule right now. But hopefully tomorrow I'm planning on probably going live maybe on here a lot earlier. So just check for notifications. Maybe I'll even start notifying in my Instagram um, when I go live just so that you guys can actually know. But um, thank you again and I will see you next time. And I just have to figure out how to actually cancel stream. <laughs>